Are we on? Are we on? Welcome, welcome, welcome to Basketball Heads Live. We're back. This is season three, and I am your host, Glenn Poo Harding. And tonight, oh boy, we have a very special guest. This basketball head is a New York City legend who hailed from Southside Jamaica, Queens. He was a parade in McDonald's All-American from Holy Cross High School who was a walking bucket and an amazing rebounder, averaging 30 points, 17 boards during his high school career, which was nuts. Because in that era, it was tough to get buckets. And he was doing it on the regular. Also, this basketball head had one of the greatest nicknames in New York City history, Band-Aid. After getting cut above his eye during the game, he made sure he came back with a vengeance. So the next game, he came back with a Band-Aid over his eye and dropped 45 points. After that, the Band-Aid became his signature and the legend was born. Not one to go to basketball camps like Five Star, BC. He would rather play for different AAU teams in New York City, which probably was Riverside or Gauchos. Who knows? He probably did went to one five-star camp, but we'll ask him that. This basketball head's childhood friend, Mark Jackson, as well as his cousin, Forrest Hills, and the Paul great Kenny Patterson would serve as motivation for his greatness. This basketball head became one of the country's top players and decided to attend the University of Missouri under legendary coach Norm Stewart. Once at Missouri, he became an instant hit, averaging 13 points and 19 points in his first two years, respectively. And then he broke out, and the whole country knew his name because he was dropping 24 points a game and 23 points a game and became a consistent All-American in his last two years. He became one a household name in New York City before he left for college. But once he got to college, he made everybody in New York City proud. This basketball head led the Tigers to three straight NCAA tournament appearances and a Big 8 regular season and tournament title. While at Mizzou, he racked up an astounding 2,580 points to become the school's all-time leading scorer. And also having his jersey retired during a ceremony in 2012. Once his college basketball career was over, this basketball head was drafted 16th in the first round to the Houston Rockets. He spent three years at Houston before moving on to the Cleveland Cavaliers for a year, played in the CBA before heading overseas and finishing up his career in 1998. So without further ado, help me welcome to the show my former roommate during the Empire State Games and New York City legend and the University of Missouri Hall of Fame inductee, Derek Bandai Chivas. Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Y'all ready? Yes, yes, yes. You have you just stepped out into, into, into the world, world of chaos. chaos. Where everybody, Where everybody goes, goes hard. hard. Tickets get the game about to start. What's going on? What's going on, brother? What's going on? <laughs> My God, Pooh, man. Thanks for having me on your show, boy. It's been oh. it's been it's been a long time coming, man. We we made it happen, man. I love what you're doing for, for the viewers out there, man. Dropping some science for everybody out there to uh grab hold to, man. I like to see that, brother. Nah, brother, it's, it's because of guys like yourself 
who kind of motivated me and all the other legends and greats. And even those guys who was kind of neighborhood, you know, legends in their community, those are guys that kept me motivated, you know, to do this going on three years now, man. So absolutely, bro. Absolutely. No doubt, man. Look, I I would have never thought <clears throat> that we would be in this situation, me interviewing you when you were the communications, you know, major, right? <laughs> Well, we got. Well, I'm gonna put you to the test. <laughs> I'm gonna give you the, uh, the 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 grade curve, bro. But the, the introduction that you gave me, man, I appreciate it, bro. Appreciate no doubt, it. no doubt, no doubt. Listen, I, I I never forget that day. You know, during the Empire State game, we were gonna get to that when you had all the reporters sitting on the floor, man. I I was astounded. Ross Strickland was laughing. Buha, everybody was laughing because we didn't think they was gonna do it, and. You had about 15 of them sitting down on the floor talking to you. So salute to you. Always. No doubt. So as I ask everyone, man, who introduced you to the game? Uh, my cousin Kenny did. Uh, because, you know, DePaul was on television like every day. And, you know, I liked for all the views. Kenny wasn't my blood cousin, but he treated me so well, man, that he was like family to me. And I, I was blessed to be in his presence, blessed to receive all the, the knowledge from him and, and to watch him go through his journey and actually get the blueprint of what to do and what not to do when it was time to pick a school and, and, and how to progress from there. But guys like Kenny, Horace, Nate Smith, and uh, the late Coop from Farmers Boulevard, anybody from Farmers Boulevard know who Coop is, just those guys like that. And uh as I progressed and was ready to receive what was out there to be offered to a guy named Ab Kelly. He gave mm -hmm. me the true essence of uh, basketball and he classified it as the science. So being around Ab Kelly, rest in peace, I was able to see the great Joe Hammond at the pinnacle, get to travel with him, fly Williams and get to see these guys and basically be a sponge and, and, and soak it up, man. And I think that was real important for uh, my maturity in the game to just sit and watch and and visualize and soak up everything that these cats was offering, man. And and Ab, he took me to these places to actually sit there and and and, and receive the information as later on would translate for me trying to mimic on the basketball floor. You got to see Joe Hammond play. Like in person, you got to see the because a lot of us we only hear about these things, and that, right? and that's sad. That's really sad. But uh, most people don't know, and and it's probably a New York thing. There's no film, so everything is word of mouth. It's a myth. It's a legend. It's a, a folk tale. But I, like I said, I was blessed by Abadab, who knew him. I got to actually sit down and have conversations with Joe actually go to the King Towers and and watch them just, uh, I don't even, you can't put in the words just watching what I seen because everything he did, it was like art. Mm. You know, there's a story I tell my kids, all of them. Everybody's talking about this Euro step. The inventor of the Euro step was invented by Joe Hammond. Mm. It wasn't called the Euro step, it was called the L move. Ooh. And the only player I've ever seen do it comparable to what Joe did was a player from Virginia. His name was Othell Wilson. Mm -hmm. Did the same move, but not at a higher level, but he did the move. And now all of a sudden, oh, it's the Euro. But when Joe did it, he didn't walk. He did, Talk it, at, to him. He did it at angles, like an L move, where the rim will protect you from getting your shot blocked. And it, it was the most beautiful thing. Like watching him play was like, Watching art, watching a, a movie. You know, we all grew up watching karate. You that's know, right. That's right. That's right. That's how Joe was. His his game was so scripted and choreography to the to the to the ninth power. And it was just beautiful to sit there as a as a young man to absorb. And then you would go and try to do what he did and never quite get it done, but do something. And then you created your own move out of something that he created, you know, but the guy who in, invented the Euro step is Joe Hammond and it's called the L move. Let's, let's keep it 100. 
Listen, y'all heard it here first. Y'all heard it here first. Exclusive on Basketball Heads. Listen, when I heard about you, it was the word of mouth. Okay. Right? I so, came I was, with, so I was a myth to you. Oh, oh, for, for <laughs> sure, for sure. Because okay. I came up on the Spice and Silk, right? Yeah, I know. Lincoln. So these guys would talk about you. And, and they would talk about, man, you know, Derek will had the band-aid on the wall coming in the game, put it on his face and kill, and then put it back on the wall during halftime. And they would tell me these stories, and we would just sit down and listen and just be in awe, like, wow, you know. And then we get a chance to see you play, and it's like, oh, man, they, they wasn't lying. He's, he's the truth. So back back then, there was a, not a lot of film, especially when guys was in high school or playing in the parks. But word of mouth did travel. Well, I never went to any of the five stars, the BCIs, none of that. The the funny story that I have for the viewers, uh, Tom Kachowski, God bless his soul, and uh, Mr. Garfinkel, God bless his soul as well. Yes. They didn't quite explain the situation with five star, meaning to pay your tab, you would have to wait tables. And they didn't explain that to my mother, and my mother took offense to that, so she didn't let me go because I was supposed to go with the great Boo Harvey that weekend. Mm. And I never got to go. But the funny thing about it, Tom Kachowski had seen me play so much that they actually rated me in the back of the book five stars, even me not attending. But the, the quote was, because I didn't go to the camp, because of the misunderstanding that they had with my mother, they put in there mischievous. My mother didn't like that. So she called whoever they need, needed to be called and made them take that out of there. So if you go look in that publication that year, I'm not in it at all. But if you can find the original, I'm in there. And the quote was, oh, he's this, he's that, but he's mischievous. And my mother didn't like that. But I basically made my bones playing with the Gauchos in Riverside and the Joe Bostic All-Stars. Joe Bostic was like a... I can't even describe what he, he meant to me and still does and love his son. I haven't talked to his daughter that much, but his son is one of the top comedy writers on the planet, man. Funny man. Facts. Very funny man. Uh, and Joe Bostic basically took me, like, as they say, on a tour, man. And he would just get five or six players, and we would go from Sharon, Pennsylvania, to Reading, Pennsylvania, any tournament that was possible, we would go to so right. that we'd get an opportunity to showcase my skills. Uh, Abadab used to take me at IS8, you know, Pete Edwards, and you that's know, right. playing that's up right. at IS8, it wasn't no joke, you know, got to uh, steel sharp and steel, got to play every morning and work out with Doug Harris, who I love, that's my guy, and he would just get me ready, and I got a a guy who, uh, from the 40 Projects, man, probably would have been probably one of the top players in New York history. His name is Jeff Red. No one knows that name, but everybody in the 40 Projects knows who. Okay. His brother is 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 Grandmaster Vic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, definitely. Well, he had a younger brother that I uh -huh. grew up with that was on. He was George Gervin and Magic Johnson before that. He could dribble, wow, he could shoot. I'll give. I'll tell you who he played like, or he played like Lloyd Daniels, mm. Jeff Red, his, his brother's Grandmaster Vic. Anybody in the South Side Jamaica, they know who. That's who used to get me ready. Wow. That's who really made me invest my time in playing. You know, because I had to be in before the lights came on. So we would go back, and you know the the Long Island train station used to go by the thing. Right. Right. So you wouldn't hear the pitter patter of the ball. And he told me if if you can get by this or do this move to it's called a si a silent crossover. Two dribbles, crossover, shot. Two dribbles, crossover, shot. Jeff Ray was cold like that, man. You know, he, he went into a different lifestyle, but I remember he always protected me, man. His family protected me. And then, you know, I had the best mixtapes on the planet. When I came to the University of Missouri, that's courtesy right, that's right. of Grandmaster Vic. Facts. Salute yeah, to Grandmaster so Vic. Jeff Red was, woo, he was unreal, man. And he was a legit 
six four guard. Mm. Yeah, he used to give people nightmares at ISA. Yeah, there, there's a lot of cats up at ISA know who I'm speaking about. But you know, beautiful soul to me, treated me well. His family treated me well. Moms used to feed me, man. It's just a beautiful time. Beautiful time. Hey, you know, it's so crazy, right? Because when when you talk about not going to five star, never was. But you made the McDonald's All American team. Yeah, but you know who my coach was. Let's not get it twisted. God bless his soul. The the late great Coach Kurt, man. He was on all those put, boards. I forgot to put Morgan him in Wooten. That's right. That's and right. You got to also remember my schedule. We played everybody. We went from Philly. We went to Connecticut. Wilbur Cross, Roman Catholic, uh, uh, Johnny Dawkins, Mackin. Mm. You know, we we played against all those guys. So to actually get me out there to the masses, you know, you had to play. And you already know I'm a trivia question. There's no team in the country that was 12 and 16 went to the state and won city championship. Only course high school did, bro. I was on that team. That's crazy. It had nothing to do with our record. It was we played everybody. But when we played in our conference, which had Lachlan, Malloy, Severian, uh, Bishop Ward, Pete Knights. You know he played. Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. Third base, bro. There's a lot of history here, bro. You know, uh, Morgan Cena that played at Rhode Island. He was unbelievable. There's a lot of cats, man, that, that played in the Catholic League in my year. There, there was no, oh, I'm going to prep school. If you went to prep school, you had troubles with your grades. It had nothing to do with your skill or the competition that you we're going to. I was one. Know, you're definitely. Know that. <laughs> yes, yes. You know, we used to always say, man, you're going to JUCO. You, you ain't to do your work. You know, but now JUCO is just another opportunity to get another look. Right. So it, it's times have changed, but the Catholic League when I played was the pinnacle, bro. It was the pinnacle. Listen. You knew that we were going to play uh, Andrew Jackson. Or so many Alexander tough players. Hamilton. Yes. So many tough players came out. Of the Catholic School League. And, and, and let's backtrack for a minute because Ross Strickland didn't go to five star. He didn't make McDonald's All American. Neither did Jamal Masper. And he was Mr. Basketball in New York State. Yeah, I, I didn't get that either. But the year I played. It, but it you my... made the McDonald's All American team without. Yeah, but you know how many people came out of New York. And it was, it was like the year when they had Pearl, Kenny Smith. Henry Darupal, and I'm missing somebody else. Yeah, Kenny well, Hutchinson was doing Yeah, that. Kenny Hutchinson. Yeah. Well, yeah. my year, we had Shelton Amityville Horror. That's right. That's right. We had Ed Bug Out Davin, the rest, that's rest right. in peace. Yeah. And myself. So we had three cats played in the McDonald game, man. And if you go and look at the stat sheet, we all had double figures, we all put in work. You know what I'm saying? And, and it was played in uh <laughs> it was played at LA at UCLA. Yeah. Now I yep. got a funny story with that. Now you know uh in 1980, what is it, 84? April 1st, Marvin Gaye passed away. Okay. We're playing the game at Paulie Pavilion, UCLA. And you know how I'm a jokester. So Shalomar, the group, is singing the national anthem. Wow. No, not wow. I'm on the I'm on the, the line. You know, you got your head down. I was like, man, why didn't you get Marvin Gaye to sing it? He <laughs> sung at the, the Laker, the Laker game. I mean the whole crowd just paused. Like all oh, my teammates were like, yo, my man, you know he just died. I was like, oh, oh, oh. but it would have sounded better if Marvin Gaye would have did, did yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I'll never forget that. I had everybody. Cracking up, man. Another another great Chiefs moment, man. Yeah, they was like, man, he dead. I was like, man, they should have had Marvin Gaye sing the national anthem like he did at the All Star game. That man, everybody was just laughing, bro. It was crazy. So I did some homework on you, bro. Really? I didn't, I didn't know. You know, I have to, man. I didn't know they called you Caldwell in the neighborhood. Nah, Callahan. Callahan. Yeah, but that, that, like, that's my mom's maiden name. I'm going to give you a story about oh, that. That's going to make you laugh. Yeah. Cats was wondering where I was at. You know what I'm saying? 
Because at the, the first two years, we weren't really getting on television. And so Cats didn't know that, but I would come home every summer to play with James Ryan and all those guys, playing Ice Eight, playing Rochdale. You know, I always play with Bo Harvey, man. I love Bo Harvey, man. He, he the closest thing to my brother my blood. The legendary coach James Ryan? Yes, the Road Runners. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. Right. so yeah, I would come ahead. back, but Catch was like, "Yeah, I know him," and I'm standing right there. Yeah, this kid Chivas at, at at Missouri, man, killing. I know that kid. I'm standing <laughs> right next to this dude. And I was like, "Yeah, yeah." I heard he was out there doing a little something. I heard he was out there doing a little ruckus. Yo, nah, my mom's maiden name is Callahan. Hold on for a sec. Hold on yeah. for a sec. I got I got a special what caller. Got? Yo, yo, yo. Say what's up. Say what's up, Lloyd. What's up? It's only Dave's uniform. What's good, man? Come on, sweet pea, man. My guy. He, he can't hear you, but you can hear him. Yeah. Yo. Who, who, who you got on the phone? I got I got Derek Chivas. If you go to YouTube, go to my page on YouTube. Derek Chivas taught me the game of basketball when they ain't you Look at see, he, he Say it again, say it again, say it again. Derek Chivas taught me the game of the basketball. I was like, who this dude could be Hollis, like Hollis this? Avenue, man, 192. He was Derrick Chivas. When I looked him up, he was at Holy Cross. Derrick Chivas is a bad joker out of Queens, nigga. From 40 Projects. That's my big brother right there. Yo, we, we got legendary, another legend on the phone, Lloyd Sweet P. Daniels. Yo, Lloyd, if you I'm gonna give you my YouTube page, just type it on in YouTube and you can check out the show, all right? I love that brother. That's my man. That's my big brother. Oh my God. Derrick Cheaters told everybody, sweet <laughs> nice. Yo, me and Derrick Cheaters played when they two park. Yeah. That's right. That's right. All right. All right. So I'm, I'm going to say, I'm going to send the uh, YouTube page and you check it out. All right. Now I'm doing the show with them. It's on YouTube. You go to YouTube, go on your TV and type in YouTube and it'll be right there. He was the truth, man. Listen to me. Yo, he wanted the best of a come out of Queens, man. That's my guy. Man. All right, all right, Lloyd. I'm going to holler at you, all right? <laughs> I appreciate you. Come on, Glenn. You know me. I'll keep it real. Man. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I'll keep it real. You ain't call me wish me happy birthday, <laughs> Always. I love you, man. All right, peace. All right. All right. Yeah, he, he he referencing the the times we used to have those late nights at Hollis Queens, man, in Hollis Park, man, at one ninety two, bro. That's crazy, man. It's, it's and all yo check it out and and you know he Lloyd had like an old soul with the but he was taught that way. Yes. And if you ever watch Lloyd, there's only a few New York cats that can actually shoot jump shots outside in the park. But Lloyd used to shoot bank shots. That's a lot a lost art, man. If you go watch him when he got in the league, he still was shooting bank shots. Yo, bro, I I tell the story all the time, man. I, I shared he gave me Mark Brown and my guy Anthony Jutes Joseph 40, others uh, 47. Easily. He, and we could do nothing with him. And, and and we'll talk about that story another time, man. But yeah. You know that that was the uh, Broncos versus the Gauchos, and we beat them for the city yeah, championship, yeah. man. Lloyd, Lloyd's a he's a he's a beautiful soul, bro. For sure, for sure, beautiful for sure. Soul. So that's how you got the name Callahan. Wow. No, no, that's that's legally my name, bro. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah, my my mother's name is Joanne Callahan. My uncle Joe Frank Callahan, who I was named after. So my name is Derek Joseph Callahan. But a gentleman who's not biologically my father, but he is my father, gave me his last name. So I actually have, and my wife and my kid is looking at me now laughing. I got two birth certificates. I got one that says Chivas. I got one that says Callahan. Wow. I got two social security numbers. One that says Callahan's, one that says Chivas. And so, you know, everybody knows me in New York like, Oh, I know that. If they don't know Callahan, they don't really know me. They going by some nonsense. Facts, facts. And I got the name wrong. It was it was Callahan. Yeah, no, I, I my, did. That, my guy, Ted Portwine told my name. me that. Yeah. That, that's, that's who I was born as. Wow. Yeah, that everybody in New York when I was, 
grinding, playing Hollis Biddies with Wendell Owens and Cheese and all of those cats. You look in the box score, Callahan. You know, Wendell Owens, uh, my 50th birthday, went out to Dallas, man, and had the time of my life with him, man, and made him remember all this stuff. Told him, I said, bro, I got a movie in here. I remember right, you used right. to get Biddy of the Week every week. I was like, man, ain't giving this dude, like, ain't nobody going to get a chance. Right. You know, went out, hung out with a man, met his kids, man, met his wife, and this went Blew my mind. His wife didn't have a clue who this dude was. She was looking at me like, who are who are you? I was like, man, he God to me. You know, he the storybook of my life, bro. You know, he went out to a faraway school, Texas Tech. He's like, yo, why you going out there? Why you ain't going to St. John? Went out there, started chopping cats up, bro. He live in DeSoto, Texas right now, man. Wow. You know what I'm saying? When do, when do, these are cats that when I saw the the, the New York God stuff. I was like, really? You're not saying that? Oh, uh, uh, no. we 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 gonna we gonna touch on that. No, we ain't gonna, gonna do that, pool, because you're gonna get me upset, man. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime you don't mention Greg Boo Harvey, bro, and you talk about basketball gods, and it's New York related, it's like what Kanye was saying when he didn't get an award. The the award ain't valid if I don't get it. Mm. So, nah. That, Everybody know how I feel about Boo, and there's not a player or person in New York that ain't been touched by this man on and off the court, man. Beautiful soul, beautiful family, you know. Yeah, that that, that took me for a loop, but I'm going to praise Harv because if it wasn't for him, I would have never got to play, man. Mm. I stayed in trouble. My mom's just like, I'm not going to beat you. I'm not going to do this. I'm going to take away something you love. Like all them trips, if you look in the pictures of the Gauchos, when they're in Vegas with Eric Brown and Lord yeah, and them, yeah. I'm on I'm on that team. I couldn't go because the week before I was boot mouth for my mother. Can't go. Wow. You know what I'm saying? And I put but up Hall, that picture too. Hall had a way to talk to my moms and get me to go. So if you look at the, the citywide championship, I, I came late. Hall had his pops, God bless his soul, pop, had his pops bring me to the citywide. Elm Corps with Mr. Um, Mr. McMillan, I was at a lot of those games late. I had to plead and, and whatever with my mom. My mom's just keeping me out of high school games. Wow. Yeah, like you don't act right. And I uh, I played with a guy named Michael McMillan. And he it was his senior year. I was a junior. And we could have did some big things. And six or seven games I never played. Because I was in trouble. But my mother would make me go sit in the stands and watch them lose. Wow. And so that would make my teammates mad at me. And I shared this with them later on in life. Like Howard Hudson. Uh, Salute to Howard Hudson. Season. Yeah. No one knows who Howard Hudson really is. Oh, he's going. they're going to know soon. He'll be on the nah, show. They, all they know about Howard Hudson is West 4th Street. <laughs> That's I right. practice with That's him right. every day. That's right. At Holy Cross. If it wasn't for him, uh, Lance, Theobald, and Eve LeBissier, I'd have got kicked out of Holy Cross, man, because I came in there with that that wild, wild stuff. And they, they, they showed me how to navigate the stuff, and, and, and it helped out a great. But Howard Hudson, man, used to be in practice. If you couldn't dribble, you couldn't bring the ball up to him. Oh, terrible. And this is what people don't know. Georgia Tech, Virginia, uh, all the top schools was coming after him. And he had the grades. He probably had like a, a 2,000 on the SAT. It was unheard of. He, he had a perfect score. But he hurt his back. Wow. And when he hurt his back, people start not messing with him. So what had happened, I guess the Vermont deal came. That's right. And he took the, the Vermont deal. But if you go up there, he's got every record known to man at one point. But he still has the steel record NCAA-wise and up at Vermont. Wow. And the smartest dude in the world, bro. And I'm talking about book smarts, street smarts, and just a beautiful person, man. Like, he ain't even have to mess with me like that. He could have been like, yo, man, that dude, man, forget that kid. He took me on his wing, told me what I needed to do. He said, man, you could do something special, young man. Like, yo, do this, do that, read that at home. You know, would take me to his neighborhood, bro, in Lawton and everything. And, and that's why I tell Holy Cross is probably one of the greatest institutions in the world, bro, because they made young men men. 
you know, and I, and I tell people, I don't get into institutions too much. I get into the people. And those people made me who I am, but the institution shaped it, bro. So in that aspect, I, I deal with that. And my 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 niece goes there now. It's, it's co-ed. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that blew me up. That was the Can reason I, why I was going to go there. That's right. I see chicks in the lobby, and then when I get there, it's all dudes. I read yeah, about that. Nah, I read they, about yo, that. They, they tricked me on that one, bro. They tricked me on that one. Well, you could have, you know, listen, you could have easily went to Jackson, Forest Hill, Hillcrest, mother, and, be and be just another guy. And be just another guy. got a story for that. You know, I played with Coach Granby in the summer. Right. And that, if it wasn't for him, I would have never been on those New York uh, Daily News teams or going to uh, cu uh, Cutchers, all those. But Coach Daly, I mean, uh, Coach Granby made that happen for me. He gave me the opportunity, the vehicle to play with all these great players. But he came with that Jackson stuff. You know, all my cousins is up in there. My cousins is shooters. And my mom didn't want me there. And so he was like, yeah, we got Robert Conaghy. And we want, uh, we got Boo Harvey. We got uh, Ronald Edwards. We got Doug. Uh, we got Smalls. We want, uh, uh, we want Derek to come in. And, and my mother said, have your daughter play center for Jackson. Conversation stopped, bro. My mom's control all of that, dude. My mom's that's, that's ruled me with salute, an iron fist. Salute to moms. And, and them cats. Yeah. But the street people knew my moms. And they knew my, my uncle. So I, all I had to do was just focus being behaving and playing basketball. Other than that, I was straight, man. I could go anywhere I went. I could go to Brooklyn, get love. And once I met Charlie Beck, my gaucho brother, love him to this day, he opened up Harlem for me, dude. You know, Sugar Hill, all the places. To this day, me and Chuck tight, man. Chuck the Prince of Harlem, dude. Ain't, ain't nobody can touch him. And he opened those those, those avenues for me, man. Because wow. we had lost touch. And I was like, man, this nigga used to say hello to God. Like, why you ain't that no? And he told me his situation. Right. I respected it, but I was telling people, they was like, who are you talking about? I was like, man, that nigga Chuck, you throw him a bad oop, he would catch it. And do all kind of, and then they don't remember Chuck played with uh, Kenny Hutch at ML King. Mm. But if Chuck would have stayed in the Catholic League at Rice, he would have had, you know how they used to get the Daily News and the Post Office to get that little head? Right, right, right. <laughs> I, he sent the picture to me. I said, uh, uh, Simmons that played at Mount St. Michael's got your head, bro. You'd have stayed in the Catholic League. You'd have had a head. He said, you're so real. Anybody, that's when they took the picture. Everybody just had the headpiece. Yeah, everybody right? just had like the, the head the headless horseman. Yeah. Everybody <laughs> wanted that. Right. But Chuck went to the, the public school and they had everybody up in there. But he had already solidified himself in the Catholic when he played with the Rice Raiders. He'd have stayed there. He would have had him a head. But he left and, you know, but Chuck, my dude, man. People ain't wow. seen him, dude. You know? Bobby Jones, man. God bless his soul. I uh found Bookie out Bobby, his... Bookie Bobby Jones. Yes, Daddy. Yeah, 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 on, yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. I was okay. blessed. I was blessed to be with all these cats, man. Who was the you best know? in the neighborhood, D? Who was the best in the neighborhood? Like you you named all of these guys that you were surrounded by. Who was the guy that everyone wanted to follow? Jeff Red. Do you I'm no going one, to. No one I, mentions. I got Jeff. people that said forty. Nah, Trust me, no one mentions Jeff Red, bro, because he took a different path. Right, right. But I'm gonna call Doug Harris. The, and the and basketball I'm people know. Cats at ISA, because you know Pete tell you, leave your name, bring your game. That's right. That's right. And we talk about tough, and you know you can't call fouls where we from. Facts. Yeah. So. And then he could whoop your tail too. Then he got his brothers and all of them too. Come on, bro. Whoop your tail and then have his other brother make you a mixtape. Come on, bro. Now, now when you got the Holy Cross, was it JV and then you went straight to varsity? Oh, oh that situation. man. I, I share this with my kids, man. I was Bill Russell, bro. I was averaging like 50, 20, 10 blocks JV. And uh, my teammates, because we still link up. That group, Lachlan, all the we was running them off the floor, 20, 30. Uh, uh, coach Jim Malone was my coach. 
They put me on varsity, man. I became a clapper, dude. There was a dude named uh, Don Pugh. It was his team. Right, right. And I, and, and, and I hope he watching. I used to be in practice giving him the business. And Coach Kerr used to be like, oh, calm down. You know, I used to boot mouth all that stuff. But then, you know, they didn't want that. And, you know, but Howard Hudson used to encourage him. Man, get, get him. Like, you know, back then I couldn't really play, but I could say hello to God. Man, I used to could jump, run. And you play with Blue Army, all I had to do was rebound, run, and they just throw it anywhere. And I'll just catch it and just do like I was like Tony Red Bull. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, for sure. I used to love Red. You mm. know, study Red stuff, but it, it, it was so different at Holy Cross, man. But I love JV. Because we was winning, and I, I was on some Wilt Chamberlain, Bill Russell. <laughs> so then they put me on varsity, and I became like, you know, North Carolina back in the days. All you know, everybody had to clap. That's right. You know, but in your head, like, and I should be out there. I'm like, because I remember he put me in a game, and I got a dunk, and so I'm like, just Arr! he takes me out, tells me the story. Have you ever seen Willie Mays or Hank Aaron do that after they hit a home run? I said, no, coach. He said, act like you've been there. I said, coach, I've never dunked on anybody like that. So there you go. Um, so you couldn't just tell me anything. You know what I'm saying? I always challenge stuff. And that's the way my mother created me, man. You just can't tell me anything. Right, right. You know, show me. I'll learn it. But no, I, I played JV, man, and loved it. When I got the varsity, it, it, it was like, a, a, and I think Coach Kerr did it on purpose. It was a humbling thing. I'm talking about I was so dominant in JV, dude. I was like, man, I can be, I, come on, bro. I, I, got up to varsity, Chris Mullen, Roger McCready. It was a different level, bro. It's uh, that, oh, it was so many levels. Enjoy yeah, but I, 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 it, it wasn't like that in JV. You just throw me the ball and I just do you. And a guy, man, he played, his name was Greg Pedro. Man, he was unbelievable. Greg Pedro, I had him on the show. You yes. Man. From from St. Peter's. Yes, the king he is won a, he won, a, he won a state championship with not a really good team, bro. Right, right. He, he made them good. Right. But picture me sitting on the bench watching him and – you know, my IQ was like, I'm I, I'm not ready. Because he was doing stuff, and he never stopped moving. Because they ran motion off. He never stopped moving. Then he was shooting off the wrong leg. Then he was shooting with his left floater. And I'm looking at this stuff like, this is a different level. Chris Mullen was different. And he took me on this wing. Because everybody thought I was going to St. John. Chris Mullen took me on this wing. Look. man. Look, huh? let, let's talk about this for, for a second. And I have this further down in my questions, but since we on it, let's let's get into it. A lot of guys from New York City would go to the Big East, would go yes. to the ACC. Yes. You went to the Big Eight. Like, like that was just, we, it was unheard of during that time. You know, like you, you were setting new ground for people from New York City, especially ball players from New York City who want to take it to the next level. Uh, why didn't you go to St. John's or any other ACC schools or anything like that? Uh, the the St. John's thing was personal. It had something to do with a coach and my mom's. And back then I was 16, so my mom's had to sign my letter of intent. She chose not to sign it. I wasn't going there. Mm. You know, and my mother knew nothing about basketball, but she was a great, and she's to this day, she's a great uh dice uh, she can just figure people out she's a good figure out people reader of character yes yes, if there, yes. If there's such such a word yes you know yes. she can really figure it out like just look at you for me oh yeah he's not a good guy and she used to always tell me uh the piece of meat thing and i was like man what's that she said you don't want to go to school and be a piece of meat because mm. i remember uh smoky Gaines from san diego state came to recruit me and, you know, but my mother, once again, didn't understand the basketball terminology. He's like, yeah, can your son uh, snatch a quarter off the backboard? You know, that's the, the uh, Earl Manigo, New York. Right, right. So my mother was like, no, he's not here for that. And so that messed up that, that deal with them. But 
you got to remember, I was always around Wendell Owens. Wendell Owens went to Texas Tech. No one knew where he went, but I followed him. I followed everything they did. I followed when they played against, he played against SMU and lit them, lit them up. You know, I followed him when he played against Baylor and lit them up. So I was following him. And then uh, the Missouri thing, they weren't recruiting me. They were recruiting James Majors from Bishop Locker. Salute to James Majors. Yeah, I, I took a couple of visits with, with, with Jay. So I knew the coaches that were in the stands. So when right. I'm out warming up, I'm looking in the stands like, okay, I know that. I know that they go uh, Coach K from Duke. Okay. That, that was so Rich Daly, who is, they call him Dr. Detroit. He's probably one of the best recruiters in the world. Dr. Detroit. <laughs> yeah. So he basically was recruiting James Majors. Coach Stewart loved James Majors. Mm. Don't know what happened between it, but he loved James Majors. Loved his game. It was a great fit because we run the triple offense. And he loved strong guards who, you know, could play both sides of the ball. Like you could like put them at the two, you could put them at the one. And James could do that. And he could defend and he could post up. And so I looked in the stands, seen him, and, and Coach Malone, who was my JV coach, but he was really my coach because he was always in my ear with the Street and Smith and who was better than me and, you know, like the little man with on your shoulder. like Right, right. You, he, that's all you're going to do? He, 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 like, piss you off before the game. So he's like, yeah, yeah, that, that coach didn't come to recruit you. He came to recruit James Mayden. I said, okay, I'm going to bust these. Boop, 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 boop. I'm going to bust them. <laughs> I did my thing against them. They started recruiting me. They found out I, I, I was a serious student. And then, you know, Missouri's got the best journalism school in the world. Okay. And that's what they sold me. You know, wow. when I came on my visit, uh, Dan Deardorf, uh Bob Costas, those are the people that I, they, I met. Met all the academia people, you know, right away. Bob Costas. Yeah, Bob Costas is, is a staple here in Missouri, bro. Wow, okay, okay, on, okay, okay. Yeah, they brought out the heavy hitters for me, brother. Yo, hold on. Can, yeah. can I can I, can I, I blow your mind real quick? You got to be kidding me, bro. Where, where you at? Where you yeah, at? Check, yeah. It out, check it out. The book is there brown. You go. Yeah, the book is brown. <laughs> oh, it's, yo, bro, come on, you man. You got the old school, my this God. Is, this is when you was in doing your thing, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Like I, I listen, the Street and Smith was like the source magazine for hip hop. Bro, the gospel. It I was the Bible. That. It was the Bible for us. Yeah, if you got the Street and Smith. You were good. Yeah, I tell people that all the time. I said, dude, I'm just trying to get honorable mention, just in there, bro. Because you know you gotta, everybody, you don't just yeah. read the one page. You keep reading, keep reading. No, I told him that. I was like, man, y'all got ninety different things, and I also told him about. You know, Mr. Kanchowski, if he didn't see you play, right, he wasn't legit. Now they got, oh, I've seen two films of him, and I'm going to go to Peach Jam and watch one Peach Jam, and he's the number one player. Meanwhile, yes. I ain't never seen this dude nowhere. So Facts. I tell him all the time, I'll be like, if you ain't been seen by Mr. Kanchowski, you weren't legit. That's you was a real. video vixen, as I call it. So yeah, nah, it's, 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 to Tom Kachowski, he changed my life, man. He, him, and my coach by sending me to prep school and making sure that I had the opportunity to to stay on the right track, man. So always, always appreciate it. Yeah, and, and, he, and he seen you play. Oh, for sure. And Wasn't that like, handshake. And that handshake. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, look me in the hand. Give me a firm handshake. Look That's me right. Hand. Look me in the hand. That's right. You know, it wasn't like, yeah, I just saw Pooh on film. He was killing. No, right. I was actually sitting there. And he had a little book. Yeah. Right down. Note. Yeah, he, he needs to work on this. He needs to do this. Yeah, come on. If bro. God saw him in the gym, they went hard on the lamp line. As soon as you saw him in the gym, Absolutely. it was just like, oh, Tom yeah, Tom and that's, yeah. that, that's what they need to bring back, man. They need to bring that one guy that, hey, man, I this is what I eat, sleep, and drink. I'm going to go watch these cats play. Nah, they get, hey, uh, you got any film on him? Did he? And then show up just for the. Boo Williams or the Peach Jam or the EYBL thing. It's just one game. So yeah. in my mind, I'll be like, I'm going to kill that one game. That's and I'm going to go into the rest of them. And That's I'll it. be the number one player in the world. Come on, man.
No, nah, like, that that, that, that is crazy. That's manufactured microwave basketball, bro. And I'm not hating. That's nah, just, it's that's just not the basketball. truth. It's the truth. Yeah, it's not basketball. So we're gonna we're gonna go back to the time machine real quick. That legendary game where you got cut and put the band-aid on your head and dropped 45. Like, who was that against? I, I know exactly who it was, and I'll tell you he was on my team, and he was a uh he's retired now. My big bro, his name is Bobby Lee, played at uh Van Buren. And the funny thing about it, Holy Cross came to get both of us at the last minute. For some reason, he didn't he didn't feel he could pass the test, so he never showed up. But he played, he was the guard on my team. And I could dunk if you throw me a log. Gotcha. And all he did was just throw me lobs, man. And I remember they remember back in the days where everybody used to reach up like that. Yes, yes, yes. And I poked in the eye, but I think that cat did it on his name was Eric Law. I don't forget nothing, bro. I got a movie in here. <coughs> yeah, he played at uh, uh IS 58. Because man, I wish I could find it. Because we was in the daily news in junior high school. We never wow. lost the game. And so they had us with the trophy, and I'm smiling because you know that's when you had the, the part in the middle of your head. You know what I'm saying? So so this happened in junior high school and not a high school? No, this happened in junior high school. And 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 you know, back then they used to come and kind of sit on you, and like it wasn't like, oh, he's not in the district. I can live in Corona and still go to Jackson. Right. Nah, they would have coaches and Coach Kerr and and the late great. Uh, Bill O'Mara was there. They came to see Bobby. They didn't come to see me. Wow. When the cat scratched me and poked me in my eye, I just got evil. I got medieval. And just after that, they added me in with Bob. Yeah, you want to come here too? And I was like, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll come. But I was like an afterthought. They so you got the name Band-Aid in junior high school? Man, we man, we was running through everybody. Now, listen, this this how the legend spread because if you ask anybody, they thought it happened at Holy Cross. No, no, it happened at Junior High School 172. And my boy, uh, I'm gonna mess with him now. I hope you're watching it. My man Arthur Maxwell. Uh, all my kids know him as yesterday because he couldn't spell yesterday in the spelling bee. That nigga said you, but he my brother forever, man. And he'll tell you he was there. Because he was wow. like, yo, y'all done pissed this dude up. That's when I was into my Bruce Lee stuff, man. I swore I was Bruce Lee, bro. To the, I'm Bruce Lee. So I used to get with the wah. I, I thought I was Bruce Lee, bro. So when right. I got cut, I was bleeding. And you remember the, uh, they, they don't do it now. It used to be the, it was like a two sticks and they cross them and then stick them on your face. Right. Then once that subsided, then I put like the real nice one on. The you know the uh the Johnson and Johnson one because it never moves. You can shower with it, then go do the interview with I'm gonna hit you in the head with this one with Bill Travis. I did a uh interview Bill with Bill Travis. Travis when I was in junior high school, bro. What? Yeah, I told you we we was running through everybody. Bill Travis, man. I'm never, I wish I could find the article for, for, man. for you guys that and girls that don't know, Bill Travis, may he rest in peace, was a legendary journalist. If he wrote a piece on you, and I have plenty of articles with Bill Travis that wrote about us and, and and everybody else in the city, but if he wrote something about you, man, and he came to the game, man, you knew you was on your way. Another bro, one. Bro, Pooh, all you needed was 10 points, bro. Then Bill Travis, everybody else, third Pearl had 35. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Alma Anderson had 60. Derek had 10 points, three rebounds. I'm in there with them. So right, I'm, right. Ah, yes, yeah, Bill Travis, man. I, I got another story about Bill Travis. This is in high school. We played a powerful Bishop Lachlan. Right. With the Wheeler twins. Mark yes. Jackson. Yes. And so we beat them. But in the course of beating them, I walked. Like, you know, you, I'm happy. Okay, okay, got you, got you, and got that you. that could have cost us the game. So Bill Travis, after the game, you know, New York had the tokens. Right, right, he right. He hands me a token. He said, yeah, 
You know they ain't going to do – you know, this is in Holy Cross. We run that. Coach Kerr run things, so they ain't going to call that war. But it was a war. Wow. Bill Travis hands me the token. He says, next time, take the train for that walk you just did. And he wrote that in the papers. Wow. Yeah, man, Bill Travis, man, he gave me a tour – uh, the Daily News, man, when he found out I was interested. Because, you know, I wrote for my school paper. Okay, okay. No, I wrote, and then I became the editor of my school paper. I, I was legit, bro. And so Bill Travis took me on, uh, like, a whole thing to see the printing press, everything. Like, the writing, the editing room, everything. Wow. Dude. And I remember he used to always smoke, like, <laughs> and just. Like a real reporter back smoke. then. Like, like, yeah, you could just <laughs> smoke and keep walking, like. Smoking in people's faces, yeah, man. Nah, just the the the, uh, the people that I've come across, man, and, and the, the love that they showed me, man, and continue to show me, man. It's a, it's a beautiful thing, bro. Beautiful. Nah, beautiful. nah. This is this is awesome, man. This is awesome, for real, for real. Now, what the hell with Jimsons? What the hell are Jimsons? Sneakers, bro. Sneakers, but hold up. I'm and from you, New York, bro. We no, you you from New York, but. You wasn't getting your shoes while I was getting. I was wearing the nice. <laughs> I don't want to put Lou Dalmeida on blast, but I was getting the nice. Oh. I don't want to put Lou on blast, but I was getting the nice. But anyway. For sure. Remember, I, I know you did this with the toothbrush. Yes, yes, yes. Shoes. That's right. That's right. That's so right. On the shoes, you see jumpers, jimmers, jimsons. Wow. And me being who I am. I didn't copyright that, so somebody going to copyright that, and someone owns that now, when I made that up. But you remember back in the days being outside on your porch cleaning your jumpers, dude? Right, right, right. I ain't had to do that. Throw those away or give them away. Because you know I had to uh, move down me. I know people. You, you had to hook up. You had to hook up. Yeah, Look, we, we're not going to talk about when you came to Empire State and... Oh, you do. <laughs> Yo, bro. Yo, you can't put that on here, dude. All right, all right, because, yo, how you not know what's in your bag? I'm going nah, to the iPad. They, they, they gave everything. it to me, and I bought it up there. I was like, yo, hold on. Yo. I, ne I never opened it until we all was in the room. I didn't even know it. So when you said surprise, it was surprise to me. Yo, bro, it was crazy. It didn't, you know, I think uh, Pete Nice, you traded, you gave Pete Nice a uh, hoodie. It, there was a, anyway, that's. Everybody, that I don't think when we were growing up, we were like that. Everybody got, you know, I shared right. the stories with Horace Naismith coming back from UMass. He wore 13. I wore 11 and a half. He would give me all this stuff. I was like, yo, man, I can fit him. Let me put some extra socks on, you know. And remember uh, top tens, Kenny would come back from DePaul, yep, yep, man. Yep. Kenny would come back from DePaul, boy. He had every top 10 in the world, dude. I was like, yo, I can fit him. And I didn't wear Kenny's size. My, I think my feet was bigger than him. I was like, nah, I just put powder on him, take him, wear on my socks. You know, like, man, I, I was getting all kinds of stuff for them. The knowledge, the gear, you know, Horace Nation, if I used to go to this house, man, and eat, bro, and you know, Horace is Jamaican. The Kerry Gold, the, the, the oxtails, all that, man. You know, Horace is like my big brother to this day, bro, and he blessed my my son, Takai, man. He has a, a all-American thing in, in um in Atlanta, and he blessed my son to come out there and play with uh, Chet Holbrook, Kamingas, all of them. My brother, my son went out there and, and, and held his own, man. I was real happy for him, bro. But bro. all that translated through Horace just reaching back, man, you know. Listen, listen, we, 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 and we're going to reach out to those guys and give them their flowers as deserved, you know what I'm for saying? Sure, for sure, for sure, for sure. Like, uh, I was on the phone the other day with uh, Talentine and Virginia great John Johnson. He yeah. Goes, he goes, tell that brother he is the best small forward I've ever played with in my whole life. So, yeah, BC, BCI. Got a story about John, too. Now, picture this. Uh huh. You got Melvin Kennedy. You already know what his house is like. Yes, yes. You got myself. And you got running from the back, Gary Voicy. Woo! Hold up. No, you can woo all you want. JJ used to get the ball going to break. And he had a move where he would throw it behind his back, but instead of passing it, he would pass it to himself and Lev. I was like, the move was so cold that you'd be like, oh, that's okay. But you that got Mel and me running. Hands, right? Yeah, he, he rocked it. 
then flipped it behind him, but he flipped it back to himself. You got to remember, J.J. was playing on championship teams with, with Ernie Moe, bro, at Tolton. Tolton time. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, Ernie Moe Ernie, Ernie Ernie Mo was a big hero of mine, bro. I had Ernie, Ernie Moe gave me show. My, first, yep. my first Riverside jacket, bro. I still got a Riverside jacket in the closet downstairs in the basement, man. Ernie wow. Moe. Did a lot, man. Ernie Mo, he 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 was another. Ernie Mo was on that uh, McDonald thing with uh, Kenny Hutch and them and Henry Darpa. So it right. was four New York players. Wow. That year, yeah. Ernie Mo was bad, bro. That's Ernie Mo crazy. was bad. That's why I said the Catholic League was unreal, bro. And if you graduated from the Catholic League, you wasn't going to JUCO, you wasn't going to prep school. You yeah, qualified. back then, yes, definitely. Yeah, you That's... qualified, so. When I hear, the, oh, yeah, he's at Catholic school and uh, he has to go to Juco. Well, what was he doing in the building? They don't do nothing but work in basketball or work in sports. So it's wow. kind of hard to. No, nah, no, nah, that's that's crazy, man. That's crazy. So, you know, you was one of the top players in the country, Parade, McDonald's All-American. Um, who was the other school besides Missouri that was recruiting you? Everybody, bro. Everybody. Everybody, everybody, and this is legit. Why man. not was, North Carolina? Like, what? Nah, no, no, like, this is the great thing about me, man. I had people that really cared about me that, that gave me information. Mm. Uh, as far as North Carolina, they recruited me, but Vincent Smith, who I worked out with every Saturday morning, plus free meals, uh, at Lost Battalion Hall, yes, yes, yes. And, and Vincent was like, if you go there, they're going to label you like uh, another Jordan. Or it was a guy named uh, Madden there. I played against him. He was like 6'6". Anybody that was 6'6", six, six, they was trying to say he was like Jordan. And so he was like, no, that's not a good fit for you. Where, okay. where else are you being recruited at? And I was like, man, I was trying to go far as, as possible. Hey, I got Oregon State with uh, Ralph Miller. Uh, I got a uh, Joby Hall at Kentucky, you know, just, I was naming them all, man. And he was pointing me in the right direction. What would be a, a good fit for my skill set? Like people don't remember, uh, they had a game and I don't know if it existed. It was called the United States youth games. Yeah. Youth games. Yes. Yeah. They're not around anymore, but I know exactly what you're man, talking about. If you, if I could, Oh man. Uh, Leroy, Gr uh, tragic Grinovich from Brooklyn, devil dog from USA. Bob Lee, that's Bob right, that's Lee, right. uh, Rob Truesdale. People forget about him. He was like the first Dr. J. With, he was like 6667 six, six, with long right. hands. Man, we had a squad, bro. Oh, wow. and Davender. Yes. Uh, Mike Boogaloo Phillips. Woo! Bro, we had a squad. That New York, uh, that New York youth team was amazing. I love you, man. Sung your jet, bro. Back to school. Love you, bro. Salute. But um, just Talent, man. Uh, Mr. Mr. Haskins coaches, Mr. Nichols that was at Boys and Girls. So I got great coaching, great discipline, and, and accountability, bro. Right. And I, I, I was with uh Gil Riddles for like a week. Cause uh talk 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 about coach. Wendell man. Owens brought me there. Right. And Wendell Owens, you know, he loved Wendell Owens, he loved Boo Harvey, but when I went there, he had us doing stuff that was crazy. And I was like, man, I ain't doing this. He said, man, you, you that's where my, my handle came from, bum juice. He said, you ain't going to be nothing but a bum. You ain't got no juice. You quitting on this. And I and I left. I never came back. But I remember him telling the play. He said, yeah, go on and get your father. I'll whoop his tail, too. I was, that's right. And he would have whooped his, he whooped his right. tail, too. But as far as discipline, and this is a lot of things. I tell people this all the time. I always listened, but I took in what would work for me. A lot of stuff he was doing didn't work for me. But when I got to Missouri, where the coach was tough on me and everything, it wasn't tough because I seen it already. You know, when I was with Mr. Kerr, he was tough. Mr. Kerr would tell you, I'll take you outside and whoop your hide, boy. And he was a short Irish man, whoop your hide. I think whoop your hide, you got to practice. He used to have this thing when you was late and you wanted to play, it was called Ride the Rail. When you get on the floor and rub your butt on the floor and clean the uh, clean the thing. I remember we were playing Ben Franklin with Eric Singleton, Walter Berry, Kenny Hutz, 
D Rob, mm. and I was late for something. He said, if you want to play, you got to ride the rail. I was like, what's, what's ride the rail? Because I had to play in this, man. Right. He said, get on the floor and scoot your butt up around that large line of the whole gym. Tell you the stuff. He did that to me until Walton them came and saw me. Then he made me get up. I remember wow. that, man. I remember that. But it also made me real angry. So it helped me. Yeah. So, yeah, Coach Kerr was at another level, man. You know, loved his family, loved his wife, man. Loved his daughters, loved his sons, man. Michael, Jimmy Jr., Katie Boom, Sharon, all of them loved him, man. Like, just beautiful human beings, man. And I, I was around that to see what a family really looks like. So now that I have my own family, I, I know what to do. Hey, I'm like, did, you, did you get your uh, note in your lunch today? These are things that I learned. You know what I'm saying? So that's right. basketball teaches us a lot of things, man. It's what we're receptive to, man. But to me, basketball was life. You know, paid for my mother's house. Uh, God bless my brother's soul, man. Made my, my brother happy while he was here on earth for 35 years, man. It's birthday coming up, man. And my mother's going to have one of the biggest parties every year for my brother in the Bronx. I ain't going to tell you the location, but people that got invitations, they will get the invitation. But these are things that basketball has provided, man. And I tell people, oh, the NBA, the NBA was great, but it's the greatest fraternity in the world. But at the end of the day, if you let them break you, you start doing other things. And my mother yes. built me to not let no one break me. That's right. And so when they was talking about, oh, you was this, check the record books. I still got a record in the league, bro. And I don't even was in the league for a cup of coffee. But you ask anybody that played with me or against me, I played in all them summer leagues to let them know that I was nice. And if I would have known what I know now, Walter Berry had been trying to get me to come overseas for years at a million a pop. And I was like, no, my my uh, my agent said if I just work on this shot and and, and dribble this, I'll get back in the league. Right, Bell's right. going to the CBA, going through all that, which was a journey. But the thing is, I had great management, so I had money deferred. So I didn't. I just wanted to play basketball. So if I went somewhere and it wasn't conducive for me, I was like, well, I'll go sit home. I'm still getting a check. But I remember Walt telling me, yo, man, come on over here, dude. This person's over there. And I went over there later, but not, not at the same price. Right, but it was right. the greatest experience of my life, and I was playing against all the top players that that was in the league. I remember playing against, uh, and he used to give me nightmares, uh, Rolando Paco Blackman. Woo! Man, when I was in the league playing against Dallas. I didn't know, man, I didn't know that was the nickname. I had him on the show. Man, That's crazy. Paco, I love him, bro, because he educated me. He, he, you know, even when he was busting me, he was right. educating me. Right, right. But when he, he, when he got over to Europe, when I could do what I want to do, the tides had turned. Mm. So, wow. Yeah, yeah, just great, great people, man. And Walter Berry is my hero, man, because he showed me how to work the financial thing. He showed me how what teams that were paying. He told me what agent that was a good agent. And he, he just walked me through everything, man. And and, and I love his, his his wife, Tammy. It's not his wife now, but she took care of me over there, fed me, you know, just, just treated me real nice, man. Richard Rutherford, his late wife. They all treated me great, bro. I, I haven't been any place where, quote unquote, they say, "Oh, he's a hater." I'm, I've never experienced that, man. I had love everywhere I went, man, and I guess that's a tribute to being just the person I was. I was very receptive and open, man. For sure. Listen, Walter Berry's on my bucket list. Just to let you know, all right. I got a few more, but Walter Berry's definitely on my bucket list. Yeah. Listen, uh, somebody could chew forty-five. I don't know who that is, but he said that UNLV game though. Say it again. He said that UNLV game, though. What was that? Oh, wow, man. Uh, went out to uh, – there's, there's a player here mentored me here, man. Uh, his name is Willie Smith. He's the greatest player that ever played at Missouri. Mm -hmm. And I'll argue with anybody the pros and cons to prove that. He's from Vegas. So he's in Vegas telling all of them, man, Missouri about to come in here and slap the crap out of y'all. So they betting. They're like, yo, bet this, bet that. But I'm not knowing this. Willie calls me. He said, man, I'm, I'm going to need you to – if you ain't never played a game in your life, I'm going to need you to play this. But you, 
Uh, Vegas was 77 and 0 before we played them. Wow. So everybody was taking Wooly's bets. And Wooly was like, after he said, man, it was basically like a Brinks truck pulled up to my house with dudes just, oh man, take your money. Yeah, we went up in there and played the perfect game in there. Because I remember seeing a Whoopi Gerberg behind the bench. Greg Anthony was at the game, but wow. he was a recruit. Right. Went to the wrong. Greg, you went to the wrong school, buddy. Because we were trying <laughs> to get it. Right, right. So he got to watch the two teams I was interested in. But, wow. you know, talk is a different breed, bro. Well, did remember, you remember what you had that game? Nah. I just know that we went at him. I just know I was effective and efficient. I didn't. I didn't jack up a lot of shots, bro. I was always effective and efficient. Well, you know, like so, I said we ran the triple offense, so I knew what I where I could get my shot. And then I had a lot of isos, but I had to do them quick. A la Bernard King, a la mm. uh, a la Albert King. You, had to get Wait, you you was able to score a bunch of buckets without a whole bunch of dribbles, bro. It was nah, it was very, and I, right, and right to that, the point. I learned that from uh, Abadat. He used to have me and Doug play at IS8, not in the gym, in the park. And we played a one dribble game, two dribble game, three dribble game. That's it. You can't get your shot off in three dribbles. You ain't gonna you're gonna clog up the rest of the players. You're gonna mess up everything. And we used to just work on that. And Doug Harris, man, was he was unreal, bro. He used to just give me nightmares, man, where I just, man, I thought I had him. I, I just sent I sent Doug the show too. I sent Doug the show, so hopefully he's watching. Yeah, I was like, man, well, how, 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 how do I do this? How do I do this? You know. And then he was tough, like a pit bull, bro. Right. You know, just a and a beautiful human being, bro. To me, I judge what people do to me. I don't want to hear, oh, he did. The, that's not my problem, bro. What that's he right. did to me, how how he made my childhood a, a blessing and 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 happy. I, I was always a happy kid, bro. You ask anybody been around me, I had a joke. You you was dead. I got right. jokes, bro. That's right. You know? It was like, That's yo, right. if you don't play basketball, you could have been a comedian. No. I got <laughs> jokes among my friends. I can't right. do a skit or get some material. Go, no, I can't do that, bro. Can't do that. So so you actually wanted to leave Missouri, right, at one time? Yeah. My, my freshman year, man, uh, just I wasn't, I wasn't used to the, the, the stuff – Coach was a philosophy major. He played hella mind games on you, bro. But no one could break me. You understand? I, I, it was like chess with him. I had to figure out, okay, he's going to do this. Let me let me see what I could do to, to counter him. And it took a process. But I played with a guy named Len Hardy, man. He's another dude that's the closest. We still live in Columbia. He's the closest thing to a brother. Without those, uh, the points I scored, if you look at it, he gave me 98 percent of them mm. and he basically he had a he had a connect because he was from detroit he was like yo dude got a package deal we can go to eastern michigan we can go to ud I, schools i never heard of but i knew if i play with him you good we're gonna be all right and then you know he had to connect so he was like yo dude we don't play this next game we out of here i was like yeah i'm with you i'm with you <laughs> They ain't talked to my mother at all. I was like, yeah, I'm with you. He's like, yo, just got a call from Michigan State. I was like, yo, you for real with Scott Skiles in there? He's like, yo, dude, we can go there. Like his, his handler, he had all the connects, man. So, yeah, but I had told people all the time because Luke Connor second was telling me on my recruiting trip how Billy Goodwin love him, uh, Reggie Carter, they all left. Uh, Billy Goodwin went to K State, Big A school. Reggie Carter went to Hawaii. I don't know what kind of school that was, but they all came back to St. John's. So that's what Lou used to say. He was like, "Yeah, you go away. You gotta want to come back." And I always kept that in my head. I was like, "I'll never go back. I'm never coming back to New York. I'm nothing." Nah, but you know the real. school I wanted to go to, and I tried to sell it to Boo Man, but he wouldn't bite. Was York College. You can look like you want. I wanted to go to your college so bad, man. You know, it's right up to. I block know for forty. Right I up know to block for forty. Yeah, man, I wanted to go there so bad, bro. So bad. 
I used to be up there every day running the track, man. Used to be in the gym. I wanted to go there so bad. Thank God you didn't, bro. No nah, I was gonna, I, Joe, I'm telling you, I would have drove that place, man. <laughs> Me and Hall. Right, right, right. Remember right. back in the days, Earl of Pearl, they was going to NAI they schools, were going, They bro. were going to small schools. I was right. still in the window that I was in. Right, right. I could right. have went there with Hall. We would have never lost a game. I, I'd have been the biggest thing since the, the, the Beatles, bro. And then just think of how many people from the projects would have been at the game, right, like right. controlling the, the atmosphere. Oh, I'll give you a perfect example. It had been like summer league at CCMY, bro. That's right. That'll That's give right. you the visual of what it would have looked like if I went to York. Right. I wanted to go there. Even their uniforms was cold, bro. Yeah. Wow. I tried to sell at the hall. Hall was like, man, I ain't going there. I was like, dude, we don't even need grades. We can go there, bro. You know, Harv had to go to San Jack. I know, I know. I had to go to San Jack if he even went to York. I just, wanted to go there so bad, bro. Just look at, let's listen to that. It's crazy, yo. Just listen yo, to that. That's the, I wanted to go there so bad, bro. You ask anybody that really know me, they was like, yo, dude, you go to York, dude. We'll go with you, dude. I'd have had the whole, Jeff Red probably would have been on, been, been my, my side, dude. And, <laughs> Grandmaster Vic would have did the halftime shows, bro. He would have been <laughs> off the chain, bro. And back then, the Supreme Team and Fat Cat, all of them, all of them. Oh, I'd have had Ron Edwards go there, bro. I'm telling you, I'd have, I'd have been like the Pied Piper. I would have had all of them go to York. Once they seen that first year, what we would have done, you know, and then you know, all the Sniff Tortoise, they just bet on the game. They'd have bet on the games, bro. That'd have brought in revenue. I'm Yo, telling you, man, I, I had it all figured you out. Had it, you had it all figured out, but the most I sent you out to Missouri and, you know, <laughs> look, Yeah, look. but I'm thinking if I would have went to 2,500 points I later. I never met my lo lovely wife, man, if I That's went right. 2,500 points later. I'd have had 4,000 points at York. You had, on, to share, you had to share the ball with too many guys. Nah. Hall wasn't like that. Hall was right. getting dimes. Right. Hall would shoot to keep the defense honest. He was giving, he was distributor. Jeff Red was like Mark Jackson. Dribble, dribble, dribble. You triple team him. He diamond. So I'm the natural scorer of the team. Wow. Oh, I had it, man. Perfect. <laughs> well, listen. Silk, Silk texted me and said, uh, ask Derek about our NCAA game. He gave us 40. Like, there's nothing we could do. We won the game, but we couldn't do anything with yeah. Chivas. Yeah, my grandmother, was, God bless her soul, was in the stands, man. She had never seen me play. Wow. But the funny thing about it, we're in the locker room. I'm telling them. I'm telling all my teammates, bro, this ain't about Missouri and Rhode Island. This is about New York. So when I go back, <laughs> that's all it's about. Facts. I was trying to tell them. I was like, Oh, they, uh, they was like, you know, this, you're looking at the scout, but, oh, he only goes this, he can't shoot, he can't. I said, bro, he can score. It ain't about shooting. Man, he lit us up like the 4th of July, bro, and we go in the locker room. I think we were up at halftime. So got that jumper, though. So got that J. She got that J. I snapped was on the scout report. The bad scout like, report. He gets in the lane and creates. Bro, when we got in the locker room, I'm looking at these dudes like, bro, do you believe me now? And Yo. it just kept going. It just kept going, man. Listen. But my pride, my New York pride, I was like, they go, I'm going. They go, I'm going. Because it was him and uh, the and other guy. Garrett, guy. Garrett, 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 Garrett. No, yes. I'm going to give you something that was even Kenny Arthritis Green Knees was going that's on. That's right, him. that's right. That's you right. got two. <laughs> Arthur Reed knees. We got Doug Smith and Nathan Button and Greg Church. And I'm telling you on the locker room, this dude's knees are not real. He's got to go put – he kept coming out of the game. And every time he came in the game, he's just dunking on him. I'm looking at them like – so he blocking my shot, right? So I'm telling – I'm telling the player, he was like, yo, dude, stop going in there. I told him, I said, dude, because uh, uh, Carlton told him, he said – Yo, dude, he ain't going to stop coming. You have to block them all. And that one time I got him and banged it on him. Ooh. No, one, one. Like, okay, you know, okay. But he had blocked like 10 of them. 
Wow. And they weren't calling the fouls that I normally get. I was like, okay, I'm angry now. I'm going to get it. He stopped doing that. And then I can go in with the live right. I had to get it. But Carlton was telling me, he was like, yo, bro, he ain't going to stop. Yeah, yeah. He did. Y'all going to keep throwing him on the floor? He ain't going to stop. But I was telling them, it's not even about Rhode Island, Missouri. It's about my, when we go back to New York, dude, I play in West 4th Street or I play any, he going to be there. He going to be like, man, we mocked y'all. And I was like, I tried to tell him in the locker room what you do. But they wouldn't listen. Listen. They from the show we say he showed them. That's right. That's right. Wow. So since since you know you we're not going, you know, go into the New York City point guards. Let me just say this. Yes, sir. Besides the Boo Harvey thing, and I and I do believe he should have been in there. Um, no, you didn't say that with enough confidence, Pooh. No, 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 like, no. I, because I, because I think he, he should have been in there. No, you made that point. You made no, that well, point. Don't say should have been. It's right. a miss injustice, bro. Right. You made that no, point. No, that's not the way you look, Pooh. You like no, no. You told I'm, me to critique it. I'm critiquing. No, uh, like, right. You no, trying to be politically that. correct. No, nah, Boo is my guy. Boo is my guy. Right. So I, I say he belong. But I know you mentioned that already. What I was, uh, what I wanted to say is. And there's no knock to Kenny Smith, right? But the doc should have started with Pearl. Okay. Right? And then, you know, Kenny Smith and Mark Jackson, yeah, all of guys. Remember his kids own his estate. And you know it's Hollywood. You got to cut me a check. Maybe they didn't cut a check. You know, they, have, really, have you really seen the footage and the stuff that was being commentated on? It was all Syracuse owned. Right. Coach Behan, you know, he controlled it. The narrative, right? And so sometimes you gotta, you know, like maybe his kids is like, "Hey, you got to cut me a check, bro," or you know, don't say anything about my dad. You know, so well, they 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 mentioned him, but it was you know, yeah. But if you seen who met, it was Syracuse controlled, right, right, right. And it was in Mark Jackson's segment, you know, so yeah. they kind of brought that in, yeah, but like that. Even when you mentioned Pearl, I told you that the teams I played up in Cutches, the Daily News, Boo was on. Boo and I were on those. I'm not in that class. I'm just a, a leaf on the tree because I was given an opportunity to absorb this stuff, and I worked on my craft. But Boo is like the greatest at 11, 12 years old playing with men, bro. These are facts. This ain't no myth. This ain't – No, when he was a freshman, he was killing with Jackson up in the States. There you yeah. go. So th these That's are not, these are not oh, yeah. uh, you, you just love Boo so much. No, I love Boo, but I also, this is these are facts. And so to see his peers who he was playing before they were, he was the, the thing before they were. And when Ron DeClario didn't say nothing, Coach DeClario didn't say nothing, I was like, wow, that he lit you up uh, all this, his whole career. So I would think you'd say something about him. Now, now, now listen to this. Because you know, Ron and Clario and, and Coach Granby had a had a little thing, right? Yeah. For years. And not to start any controversy, but you know, now he is the winningest coach in PSL. Okay, controversy. Yeah, he's been there longer. Controversy sells. That'll get you more uh content clicks. Let's talk about it. You should have more content no. clicks for them not having Boo Harvey on it. That's yeah, yeah, it, it, which is which is crazy. Which is crazy. No, because I had, you know, I have a lot of people hit me in my DM. Yes. Uh, ask me why didn't I rate him as one of the top coaches in New York City history? I put up this list, right? And uh -huh. I try to balance it out. Um, and I don't remember the list, but it was a combination of PSAL and Catholic school coaches. Oh, and you combined them or you did them separately? No, I did them. I combined them. I didn't wow. do them separate, right? I didn't do them separate. And, and all of them for, you know, different reasons. Um, but when I was was playing, I remember I don't didn't remember Cardoza. They came in like in the nineties, right? No, nah, Cardoza they, was no, no. They Cardoza. was around. No, they was around. But far as winning, because he started a year after my coach. My coach, yeah. my coach started in the eighty. The Clarion started in eighty one. Yeah, they, so, had, they had action fraction there, bro. So, and I had to let everybody Woo! know that I do agree. He's definitely one of the top coaches in New York City history. Um, but just because you have the most wins, I can't say that you should be on the list that I created. 
even though if I expanded it, he would be on that list. So right, salute to Ron I have a question to propose to you. You made the list, didn't you, right? And so you didn't put him on your list. So he know that you know Hov and you played with Hov up in Empire State games. That's why they probably didn't put him in the movie. It's your fault. I blame you. No, nah, no. Nah, if, if I was – I should have been a consultant on that. But so no, to my you, God, we, NYC spoke, point man, God. I, thought you, I thought you were, but – no, no, it, it was it was the guys uh Dion Washington over at New York City Point Guards. They do that on Instagram. So but then Kevin Garnett and a whole bunch of people had okay. their hands in it. So salute okay. to them. And salute right. to Ron Clary again. I'm gonna get you on the show, brother. We we gonna we're gonna talk about all of that. Um yeah, but so, I, I love I love you know Ron Clary can ball too. Yeah, so I heard. Yeah, he used to be nice, bro. Yeah, don't get it twisted. He used to get ball. So, and, and, I, and I also know that uh, his father uh, was a doctor that helped. Uh, uh, he operated on Martin Luther King during the civil rights movements yes. back in the days. Yes. That's definitely yeah. a legendary story. So, salute to Ronald Clario. Um, if you could change one thing about your career, what would it be? Oh, I got one. Uh, keeping my mouth shut when I got drafted. I wrote a check my ass couldn't cash. I was like, yeah, when I get in the league, I can score on anybody. I'm going to have a keen get rest because I'm going to be scoring on everybody. And never knowing that, it's never the first guy. Like, I always, oh, if you watch the tape, I went in there. It was never the first guy to block my shot. It was always the second one. But the thing was, I was never allowed to cash them checks. Mm. I wrote a lot of checks my, I couldn't cash, whether it be, hey, this coach, you know. And then the thing I, I tell people all the time and I try to share with my kids about the media, I had a radio show while I was playing. And so when they wasn't playing me as much as they was playing me in the beginning, because, you know, I was getting rookie of the week, like back to back, back. And I was like, man, I'm about to get rookie of the year, you know. They stopped playing me for some reason. And so I'm on a radio show, uh, uh, Edmund and Martini is syndicated. Uh, she's since passed, but loved her, man. And she loved me. And I, I had a radio show, so I used to be on the radio show just banging on Houston and, and Mr. Ray Patterson. It's like, man, they paying me all this money and they ain't playing me. What y'all think? Call in. And the, and the phone lines would just light up, bro. And then after a while, they was like, man, this, this little snot-nosed little kid, man, we get rid of his ass. Wow. And I remember being in a, a training room with Ray Malchiori and, and uh, uh, Coach Cheney said, yeah, we thinking about trading you. Me being as naive as I was, I was like, okay, when do I get traded? Mm. That was the wrong answer. But once again, I'm 20 years old, and all I know is playing. I All I know is if you work hard – you get to play, but that's not the case in the league. And so when they said that, I was like, when do I get traded? We play against the Nets. Got my whole family there. And uh, what was it? Uh, Meadowlands. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. My whole family there. We eating. I get a lot of run. I'm playing good. And I'll never forget. It was like yesterday. Sleepy Floyd, who I love, he walks through. He says, he said, man, I love you, dude. I'm going to see you. Good luck. I was like, okay, I'm getting on the plane with y'all. He said, nah, man, you just been traded. This was in wow. February, I remember. And so, once again, being young, I was like, oh, for real? When do I leave? Where do I go? Like, I didn't care. I just wanted to play. Like, this man played me a lot, and I proved that if you give me 28 minutes, whatever, I'm productive. Then you start giving me 13 minutes. Then you start, and I hated it, uh, did not, uh, coach's decision did not play. I didn't know what that meant. I was like, I ain't hurt. So I got on the radio just blasting on them. Man, you got coaches here, got players in there, they paying and putting DNC, but I didn't know what it meant. But the viewers was like, yeah, you right, you right, you right, you right. You tell them, tell them, man, they, you right. And that pissed off Ray Patterson and they got me out of there. But I tell people all the time, I must admit something to someone because I got traded for cash and three picks. And wow. I was the 16th pick, so evidently they, 
they they valued me playing. And I remember when I got to Cleveland, they played uh, coach. I love Lenny Wilkins, man. He yes, played me yeah. right away. And Brian Winters was there. Loved working out with him in the morning. He played me right away. He just threw me in the fire. But I was ready. And then not knowing the business, it's time for me to get a contract. So are you going to pay me this? Because I remember being in uh, Applebee's with Rod. I said, man, I'm about to be part of the $2 million crew, boy. I'm about to get paid. They have that off-season talk. He's like, yeah, well, you know, we're going to – like crazy stuff that had nothing to do with basketball. And so I tell people all the time, man, you got to be mentally strong to be in the league. It's not all about your talent. You can work on your craft forever. But if you let them break you – and you succumb to drinking or just doing stuff that ain't got nothing to do with basketball, you know, there, there'll be times where you be like, oh, fuck, let me go out and get a drink. I'm rich. I don't care. But that's not what I got into it for. I was the dude that you pull over, let's hoop. I got to, you know, that's why I love Tim Hardaway, man. When I went to Chicago, Tim Hardaway always had shoes and a ball. We used to drive in Chicago. He's like, yo, they look like, man, they can get it. Yo. Park the car, and we'd go out and play them. They'd be like, "Yo, what y'all, what y'all doing in the like the regular park?" That's that's basketball to me, bro. You know, and I tell people that all the time. You know, you write a check and you can't cash it, then you know. And I've always been this way. Whatever consequences can, I could deal. I could deal with them, or I wouldn't have did what I did. You know, but wow, there's nothing, nothing in the world like. The NBA, bro. It's the greatest fraternity in the world. And you get to see that when you go over to Europe and you're on a boat or you taping yourself. You know what I'm saying? But the competition, trust, was good. And you can go Google my numbers. I was putting up 29 to 30 euro every game. Mm. Like, I see these cats now getting six points and still on the team. Dude told me at halftime, he said, man, you got 17. You ain't playing hard enough. That was the thing back in the day. If you wasn't produced, goodbye. That's why I tell people. To, I said, man, I got to watch Walter Berry up and close, bro. Whoever came over there, they got it. Mm. They was like, oh, he, he can't go right. And he would do this, go right to his left. Well, stop it. That's right. That's right. I'll give you an example. Played against Alex English. Played against him in the NBA. He was a nightmare. Ooh. No. When he got Dang. over to Europe, dude, he was, a mere, he was a mere mortal. He's a mere mortal. Wow. He'd be lucky if he could get eight points, nine points. He's a mere mortal when he got over there. But he played, he had such a long stretch in the league, right? Bro, you get in that lane, dude. I had 6'11". I played with a guy named Gary Plummer, bro. He was grabbing that out of the air. Roy Tarpley, God bless his soul. They was grabbing that out of the air, bro. Roy Tarpley, tough. Yeah, I'm the dude, I was over there with bangers, bro. Like, dude, you was like, what happened to them? Dominique came over there the, the next year, and the team I was on wasn't a big team. So we played, and then I get a break. I go watch Dominique and Walt go at it. And I'm wow. talking about Walt was giving them the business, man. And I, I mean business on both ends. And Walt, for some reason, he, he had a little jumper over there. Remember, that, that was the knock. Oh, Walt. Right. No, he, he mastered that. Elbow to elbow, 10 to 12 foot consistent jumper. And then when you guarded him, then he could do his same move. And then he just rocked you because he he, he he was awkward. Yeah, Walt's a beautiful man, dude. Took care of me over there, bro. What about Dow Middleton? Did you play against him over in Spain? Oh, man, the future. I played with the future, bro. It's a, a, a beast. The, but Dow Middleton. The big man that played with in the Empire State games, right? Yes, but yes, the future yes. was over there, and he'll tell you. He punked most of those big dudes over there. They were scared of him. He was too dribbling, just backing them, dunking on them. And they used to have a paper over in Spain called Gigante. Uh -huh. And he was always on the cover of it, just facial people. Yeah. They, they say when, 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 when he go back to Spain, he's like Jordan over there, right? He's like the superstar. No, no, no he wasn't Jordan. Let's start okay. okay, not Jordan, but far as in the, in the he, media. He, he, was, he was a man among boys. Got you, got he's you. He's a man because I was over there with uh, John Pannone, 
uh, what's my guys, man? He was these are legends, boy. John Pannone. I came after David Russell from St. John's over there. Now David Russell was Michael Jordan over there. Wow. Okay. And he spoke the language. He had like uh, commercials, uh, candy, everything. Yeah, he he was different. Yeah, wow. He different. Hey, listen, Trevor Davis said, "What's up?" He's on the line right now. Trevor Davis from Boys and Girls. Okay. He said, "What's up?" And also, I want to say salute to my guy. Uh, Edwin Lopez, Lopez, hope I'm saying that right, Munch. We call him Munch, right? Okay. He's a coach. He coached women's basketball. His pro-am uh, team won nine championships this wow. summer. Like, that that's unheard of for any pro-am team that I've heard about in years. Women. I'm talking about, when we talk about fundamentally sound, Kahoot, street swag, Renee Taylor, shout out to Renee Taylor. And, and uh Nikki Avery uh and, and a host of others man who, who were just amazing and coach Munch, salute he got the coach of the summer you know so salute to coach Munch, man for everything you do for New York City basketball so salute my guy for sure for sure so now we want to get into our top five top five top five top five all right so Hope we don't stop you in this part. So you've you been going smooth so far, man. No, nah, you're not because I'm going to blow your head up with the answer. Okay, okay. All right. So top five guys you played with. Only five. Nobody coming off the bench. You ready? One, Boo Harvey. Two, Boo Harvey. Three, Boo Harvey. Four, Boo Harvey. Five, Gregory Sir Albert Boo Harvey. <laughs> I got you. I got you. I got you. Salute to Boo. Hope we can get you in the show one day, my brother. I know that probably won't happen, but still, I'm still gonna keep putting it out there because I love the manifest things. Even if reality. you don't get them, the true essence of basketball players in New York City will speak about it. Oh, they always do. They always do. They, they always have no do. choice, man. He 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 died. He served like mayonnaise on a sandwich. He served a lot of cats in New York, man, at, at a young age. Love Hall, man. All right. I, I I need a real answer now. Yes, that is a real answer. No, 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 no. I, I I'm talking about for the next one. I accepted that. Because I agree. Okay. All right. Top five players you played against. Is this in New York or just period? Period. Uh, one um, Nicholas Gallus is like the Michael Jordan over in Greece. Mm. Uh, shot a real jump shot, was strong, shoot with both his hands, and got every call over there. And if you look behind me, I've yeah, got, I've got an autographed picture of him. Wow, that's him right there, right? It's wow. Green. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah, yeah. That's me in the yellow hovering over him. They probably call foul on me. But I got another one somewhere in my basement. He tried to finger roll it. And I grabbed it out of the air. And it wow. Was legit, hold up. It was a legitimate block. Because he is who he is, they call goaltending. But check this out. We go down the court, and he says, that was a now, you know he went to Seton Hall, so he, he spoke English. Right, right. He was like, that was a good one. Yeah. Um, Nigel Wallace. Mm. Just unreal. And I, I, I got to play against him, but I wasn't getting that much run. But when I, they did put me in, he did his number on me, and it was at Rochdale. Uh, I'm going to save the last one. Uh, for with an explanation, um, uh, Jeff Red punished me every every day at uh, from four to six because I think the lights came on in the projects at six and I had to be in the house. And uh, Charlie Beck, mm. Charlie Beck was like the most because we had to go against each other in practice. He was an orthodox jump off the wrong leg. Uh, and, you know, Chuck used to wear, like, a 14 at, like, 13, 15 years old. 
he, he wear like an 18 now. Wow. But he's still 6'4". And Chuck used to just, you back him in, you back him in. He would feel your body, then get off you, then block. It. And, and and I think, was that, three or four? That's four. That? That's four. That's four. Okay, my fifth one is Kenny Patterson. Mm. And the story that I'm going to give to you is, I was smelling myself. He was at, I think he was a sophomore at DePaul. And they had a the main court in Rochdale, but they used to have courts in the back hidden that guys like you and I, when we were 13, 14, we could dunk on. Right, right. I played him one-on-one. I'll never forget it. Like, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm good. I, I play against this dude I see on CBS. I scored the first two points. I'm talking mad trash to him. Like, yo, dude, need your scholarship. Need this. And I watched levels to this game, bro. That's right. Levels are to this game. I scored two points. Kenny beat me 20 to 2. <laughs> no, watch. This is what's going. This is what I'm going to show you how beautiful people are, man, that, that, that came in my life and taught me a lesson, but within that lesson, still encouraged me, didn't didn't break me. After he served me, there used to be a, I hope people remember Mr. Softy, because Russell, oh, yeah, 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 yes, Russell Pierre's dad used to own it, and I need those checks, Mr. Pierre. But anyway, takes me to get some ice cream, and while I'm getting the ice cream, he's telling me, he said, at every level, you're going to have to get better. You're a good high school player. Right? Right. I'm a sophomore. But mm. I'm, I told you, I'm playing JV. I'm 50 and 30 rebounds, and I think I can play. And I'm taller than him, so I'm really thin. But he danced on me like dancing with the wolves. But he took me and explained to me the essence, as, as Abadab used to say, he explained to me the science of basketball, bro. And he told me, he said, each level you got to blah, 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 blah of this. Each game you got to blah, blah, blah of this. Each moment you got to blah, blah, blah. Each second. You can't rely on your laurels or what you did this because there's another dude coming. Mm-hmm. He said, that's why I stay sharp. That's why I did. He used to always dribble uh, because Boo used to do it. And I try. That's how I learned how. And Rod Strickland follows yeah. him as well. Rod did that too, but yep. I don't know if Rod dribbled with a, a handball. Oh wow! Kenny and and Boo used to dribble with handballs. Yeah, but no, that's crazy. Kenny, Kenny Patterson, I'm talking about man, just put it on me after that first two. But he he explained everything, bought me ice cream, gave me some gear, gave me a couple of dollars, and just. Explain to me, man. There's levels to this, bro. That's right. That's why I tell people uh, in life, you're going to get a humble pie. I tell people when I got to the league, everything was great for me. Right. Stuff wasn't great for me. I, I, I reacted. That's just me. But you gave a young 20-year-old dude a radio show. I vented even more. And the powers that be was like, oh, but the people that owned the Rockets didn't control the radio show. And by me walling out, I was getting ratings. So the people that were in charge of the Edmund and Martin Teeny show, they didn't restrain me. They was like, yeah, get him. Get him. What else you say? So. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's yeah, definitely. But those, those are my five, man. But Kenny, man, I, I praise him forever, bro, because he didn't have to do that. He could have just. Kick my butt and be like, yeah, nigga, shut your bitch ass up. Stop talking so much. Stop running yeah. your mouth. He when I when I had Rod on the show, he, he gave uh Kenny Patterson high praise and said he was one of the reasons why he chose DePaul. And he's a he's a beautiful human being, bro. Salute to my dude. I hope you're feeling better, man. I ain't trying to put your business on the air, but I love you, bro. No but doubt, him, no doubt. Salute. And you know the great Fred Burton, bro. Those yes, are all yes. dudes that I watched. And then the good thing about it. I played with them, so I got to sit. I got to, you know, playing with Joe Bossix All-Star, man. You ain't ready. Joe will take you on the trip, but you ain't playing. And yeah, let's to... talk a little bit. Let's talk a little bit about uh, Mr. Bostic, man, and, and yeah. what he meant to you in the community out in Queens because 
Ted Portwine, and a host of others always talk about Mr. Bostic. Yeah, well, we, we with Joe, you got Miss, and you also got, uh, uh, I got records where you could go to, the AAU tournament used to be in Jacksonville. And Joe had Eric Singleton, Boo Watkins, myself, mm. Boo, Doug, and Robert Carnegie. Who, who's, drove, now, who's now the councilman, right? Yeah, we drove to, uh, we beat everybody who we supposed to be, and we qualified to go play in Jacksonville for the real AAU tournament. That's where everybody, every state would go. And went up there in a van, eating from Gals. Uh, anybody from New York know about Gals Farm? Used to get the cold cuts and the sandwich. Right. And I got a name, man, that people don't talk about too much. His name is Gus Anthony. My mm. man Bimmy used to be down with the spring team. Oh, yeah, yeah, Bim, yeah, Bim, Bim. Bim. Didn't know. He's supposed to come on the show. Bim, holla at yeah. me, man. People didn't know Bim used to get play. Yeah, I heard. Before he, he chose me. a different lifestyle. Yeah, but Bim was, you ever remember how the dude used to say, yeah, D him up and see what, what his toothpaste smell like. That was Bimmy. Mm. Bimmy would guard you 94 feet, turn you, turn you, turn you, turn you. Bim had hella D, man, and he was quick. And so Joe took him on the the the, the on the on the uh the trip with us, you know. And uh, there was a song called Do I Do What You Do by Stevie Wonder. Yes, yes, yes. And we all on the thing going to Jacksonville, and you know, Joe gets the gals and the and the food, paying for everything, mm. paying for everything. Get there. And, and uh, we all singing the song, and, and what's the name? <laughs> Bimmy said, "Doug be playing by himself, man." And and just everybody just cracking up, man. And then when we get there, something transpires between Joe and Doug, and Doug doesn't play in the in the champ. Uh, the, the to get to the championship is a semifinal, right? Doug doesn't play in the game. He sits up. He shoots from half court. He's making them. And he tells Joe, he said, yeah, I'm pulling up from here. And Joe, you said, brother, you're going to be sitting right next to me, brother. And and Doug sat up in the stands and we lost, man. We wow. lost. If he would have played, because he was giving, he was averaging like 25. We lost by like six. Yeah. That's crazy. That. Yo. That. Now, Joe basically locked in, man, took care of everybody. And there was a tournament. And Sharon, Pennsylvania used to get the trophies that look like furniture. Fred Burton, uh, Dwayne, DJ, Dr. Joe used to say, I need you to be like DJ. DJ's a motherfucker, brother. <laughs> yeah. Man, Joe was Joe was special, man. He was special, man. Special to my family. You know, my moms wouldn't let me be around people or stay the night. I stay at Joe's house, eat, man. Then when he had kids, man. Hang with Kyle, you know, be like, brother. <laughs> yeah, man, love Joe, bro. Love Yo, Joe. Trevor Davis sent me this picture. I don't know if you can see it. That's the United States youth team. Yes. You say you used to call them Trevor Blood. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yo, look at look at look at the uh look yes. at look at the look at the lineup, bro. Right. Yeah, it's crazy. Me that doesn't exist no more. Man, we went down there. They had Danny Ferry. Everybody was playing in that tournament, bro. Yeah. Yeah. I put this picture up, and people went nuts. He was like, yo, do you know who was in that picture? And he's just naming the guys, and I'm going, wow, this is crazy. Yeah, that's the New York youth game, bro. They gave out hella gear. You want to – because it was played at uh, University of Massachusetts in Amherst. Here's your boy right there, Hoff. Huh. Look at Harv, yo! But look at Harv. He the first one with the the high top fade, looking like Michael Bivens. <laughs> yeah. Facts, facts. Yeah. Oh, look on there, Bob Lee that played with me in junior high school. He was on that team. Yeah, probably so. I I, I don't know. I, he, I, he probably he's a blackest dude. Out. Look for the blackest dude on there. He little. He he's a guard. Blackest dude on there. Is that him? That's Bob right there. 
He yep, was a, yep. he was a, uh he was a lieutenant at Rikers Island for and it's, and, it's, and it's Trevor and that's Trevor Blood. That's Trevor Blood. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm trying to find. Hold on, who the hell are you? I know you were in this picture, and I couldn't find you. He's like, no, that's D. Chivas. No, I'm, I'm I'm in there. That's when you know I had the little part in the middle, the, the little yeah, I was straight. Man, that was a hell of a team, bro. Look, look and see who's the the coaches, man. The oh, coaches man. are just huge, man. We had great coaches, yeah. bro, in New York City at, at the time I was coming through, man. Yeah. Great teachers. Yeah, great teacher, bro. Wow, wow. Great teachers, man. Great father. Yo, and back then, wasn't everybody make the team? Right, you had right, to try right. Out and then they put your name on the list. Right, 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 right. That's and how the light skinned dude that you see there, he went to Mount St. Michael's. Okay. He was nice, bro. Man, we had a squad. We had a squad, bro. We were no, everybody. Hold on. That's the dude, uh, Troy Truesdale with the big hands. Wow. He played at Hillcrest. Yeah, you make, I, told you, I got a, I got a, I got a movie up in here. That's Leroy Tragic Grinovich went to uh, Xavier from Brooklyn, Brooklyn, USA. And check out my afro. Come on, bro. You can't tell me that ain't a great nappy afro. <laughs> now, if you see my son, Avon Paul, right? He looks exactly like that. Built wow. exactly like that. Wow. Yeah, nah, we was stacked, bro. That's, That's when you got to, they cut you daily, and then you got to go. The dude, in the first cut, they tap you, they turn you around, tap you on the shoulder, you be like, trying to stick your <laughs> shoulder out so they can pick you. Then after that, they put your name on the board. Then after that, you go to Lost Battalion, because all the trials is at Lost Battalion Hall. Right. That's why I was wondering why Vincent was training us, but he never went with us. It, it was weird, but nah, that that was like the greatest time I had, man. And I had I got so many stories, and you know I had everybody cracking up on that trip, bro. Yo, I, I will go back a little bit, man, <laughs> oh, because okay. is- they had tryouts. You guys didn't have to try out, right? You guys, Rod, Boo, you got to have tryouts. We talking about the Empire State Games. Yeah, yeah. They had it at Boys and Girls. Hold on, hold on, time out. They had tryouts, but they knew who was on the squad. Already. Already. Okay, they, had, they had formal invitation tryouts. Yes. So I'm coming home from prep school, and my coach tells me about it, right? He said, Coach Brown wants you to come out for the team. So, of course, it's like 300 guys in the whole damn job. I'm, and I'm not joking. It's like 300 guys. And I go down there and I kill. But I'm hearing – Who's on the team? And oh, really? I, I'm not in college yet. This is for the open team. I played in the high school the year before, right? But I'm like, okay, I'm going out here and get some rec. But when I heard you, Ron Strickland, uh, Eric Johnson, Dal Militant, and all these other guys, I was like, Eric Brown and all these, I was like, nah, yeah. it's not going to happen. And actually, I'm having Eric Brown on next Sunday, so we'll get to that. He be my dude, bro. So... I left, I you know, I come home, and then I get a call like six o'clock in the morning, like six thirty, like uh Pooh, where you at? I'm yeah. like, what do you mean, coach? It's Paul <laughs> Brown. He's like, Pooh, you, you made the team. Like, yeah. no, I said, no one told me. So I, to wake up my mom's and to pack a bag and rush down to the high. And it, it was crazy. Then, you know, those are rumors who made the team. Yes. But then once I saw it was actually true, you know, and I tell the story, one of the highlights of my basketball career, because not only just you, Ross Strickland, Boo Harvey, Eric Brown, Dow Militon, Dwayne Martin was on that team. Yeah, my, I, I try to tell people I played against Dwayne Martin because it was him and Eric Johnson in the backcourt. That's right. The Kangaroo Classic. They went That's to right. Yeah. And people was like, Yo, man, that dude on toes, I was like, dude, he was all city. Everybody, I yeah. tell everybody. He had a, he had one of the necks in the <laughs> daily room. Yeah. Come on, bro. Nah, I, I remember, I remember D. Martin, dude. And he would tell us he was going to be an actor. We didn't, you know. Nobody was even listening. We wasn't listening. And Pete Nice was telling us he was going to be a rapper. Nobody nah, was listening. 
I don't know if you remember when we used to be in a room, uh, Pete used to bust off verses. It just didn't, we wasn't ready for it. He was like, no, on, I'm kind of getting off this shit. He was on a different thing. We right, were looking at him right. like, because we knew him. He's like, oh, that's cold. But meanwhile, your head is like, Ugh. And did you know when Third Base dropped the album, he had the whole team in the back of the album? I just know that he gave me a shout out, me and Hall, me and Boo. No, but, he had the whole team. I, I was in college showing everybody like, okay. yo, I told y'all I was a lion. I told y'all I was a lion. Now, like, when I played in Cleveland, they had a concert. And I came and got him an MC search, man, and hung out with them, man. Because he was telling me about this card stuff, investing in cards. I was like, man, what the hell is that? He's like, nah, I'm going to buy these Harness Wagner cards and all these this memorabilia, dude, it's going to make me millions. And that's what he do now. Yeah. Now, actually, he's uh, he's curator of the Hip Hop Hall of Fame. Okay. But I so, know he had a he yeah, had yeah, a he, he was doing, yes, he was making yes. millions off of it. Yes. Yes, definitely. Yeah. yeah. All right. Last question, D. Last question. And 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 I want to, you know, thank your wife for helping you set this up, man. Appreciate you so much for helping my yeah, guy. Tell me, tell me that my kids are outside. Salute, the salute. And my wife got the let me pump my wife. My wife got the office with a shower in it. <laughs> <laughs> Look at my no. daughter. She's out there now. And this is my daughter. She's one of yeah. the top players in the state. Let, let's, 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 hold on. Before we get to the last what, question, what? let's talk about your kids and, and all the things that they're accomplishing right now because, you know, they're following dad's footsteps. No, no. The, the funny thing about they're not, man. All my kids are different. Like, I have the, the range from 33, which is my oldest daughter, and she's in academia. And she's actually the academic coordinator at my son that plays in NAI at, at William and Woods. My other daughter just had a baby. She's in Chicago. She's in advertisement. And everybody know about my son Q. You know, the way he went down to Hampton and just wrecked shop. He across the water and he just chilling right now, working on his body. But he's the he's your organic cannabis guy. Gotcha. All natural dude, vegan dude. You know, so same here, my, same here, yeah, same here. Most of my my older kids are like PRNs; they're as needed. But my younger kids, man, all hands on dinners, the conversations, man, and my youngest son, the one I told you looks like in the picture. Yes, yes, a Ava Paul. He he's coming along, man. I just he reminds me of me so much. It's scary, and my my son Takai Joseph, man, he, he's a different kind of kid, man. Different kind of kid, different, and he's a dog. And I remember uh, Rod Strickland having a conversation with him in that tournament in Atlanta. And he was like, yeah, he's shaking my hand, look me in my face. I was like, where else is he supposed to look you at, man? I said, dude, come on, bro, that's my son. That's right. And great conversations, but my daughter's on a, a whole different level, bro. And I mean, as far as a person, as far as her athletic ability, and as far as her, nothing fades her. And you have to get her permission. I had to get permission to wear the shirt. He said, hey, you got to get her permission. <laughs> yeah, you got to get her permission. I'm, I'm still trying to get on the list to come come to her games. They say her games are like the biggest games in Missouri. I'm still not on the list. Wow. You know, but I, I got the tape. My mom makes sure I get the tape. And she is special. And what I tell everybody, when a kid is special young, you just pray that they continue to love it. Because my oldest daughter, nobody could touch her. But she didn't enjoy the process. And so she stopped doing it. And that's why I hope my youngest daughter doesn't stop enjoying the process. But we have a lot of people to tell her, oh, the process ain't going to be that bad. But right now, man, she's a monster in basketball. And it's volleyball time now. She's a monster in volleyball. She just did something yesterday that was just crazy. I was like, wow, bro, you got ups. I said, don't do a lot of laps. I had ups too. They had me doing these 10 and ones, man. And boy, I couldn't jump no more. I was just getting layups. But yeah, my kids, are, they're good people, man. And, and everything my mother taught me, I try to teach them, man, so that 
when they navigate this world, they'll be okay. And I tell people all the time, I've been retired. I'm going to my fourth year. I do what I want, man. I say what I want. I go where I want. And I've been afforded that opportunity by the grace of God, man. You know, not dudes, I mean, you retired, you 55. I was like, yeah, dude, I'm done. My mother said, you got to pay rent while you're here on earth. I paid my rent by investing my time working with disabled adults, man. And I love people like that because they're genuine. You know, there's nothing in the world they want from you. But That's love right. and respect, man. Yo, so crazy. The reason why you was born July 3rd and I was born July 2nd. There you go, bro. Right? Uh, I'm a dean of a, a special ed high school. Um, I, I love what I do and I love the kids uh, that I, I'm there to encourage and teach. And it's man, the so. most genuine thing that you'll ever accept in your life from a human being, bro, that don't want nothing from you, bro. Just love and laugh. You know, and I did the Special Olympics as well, so them cats is like wowing it out. Like I was like, dude, is, is anybody under the, you know, get them in the huddle be like, dude, is anybody getting paid? <laughs> dude, is anybody got a sneaker deal? Like, yeah, them <laughs> cats wasn't joking around, bro, so yeah. You know, but you got you got to pay rent while you're here on Earth, man. You know, what what is that you're going to do to help someone else, man? And, and I gave a 10 plus years to a great organization here in Missouri, NBA Woodhaven, that provided me the opportunity to do that, man. And now all I do is just create cooking great meals, man. Uh, I had a podcast in the, in the works with Doug Smith and uh, Willie Smith, and it, it's still up in the grab because I'm like a germaphobe, bro. So I was like, man, since the monkey disease and the COVID, I was like, I ain't coming out, bro. I ain't going out. So. This, this is why I tell people this, this is the best way um, to, to communicate right now and, and, and keep things tight, you know. Yeah, and I, I told you before, I was like, Pooh, you looking good, bro. You looking good. So I know you ain't around people <coughs> coughing on you, so you good. Nah, listen, I'm like your son. I, I, I take care of myself. Yeah, uh, yeah. Don't drink, don't smoke, and, and, right, and, and I eat right. So, But look, uh, I have a little cousin, right? Yes, sir. He's one of the top point guards in the city. He's only going to be a sophomore, uh, Tristan Man Man Davis. And okay. I'm talking about, he reminds me of point guards from our era. Wow. Because he has the boogie. He can pass. He can get to the hole at will. Remind me of Kenny Anderson for us getting to the hole at ease on guys. And he, he's still growing. And I just hooked him up with a physical trainer uh, just to get his body right, right? Yeah. Um, and he's still growing. He's a starting point guard for Thomas Jefferson. Salute yeah. to my guy, Bud, uh, Lawrence Pollard. And he's going to be a sophomore this year. Now, what, what high school is he at? He's at Thomas Jefferson. We're going to keep uh, listening. Like I said, I told you behind the scenes, man, uh, Coach Norm Stewart has a game here. And he's got me involved in it, man. So I'm trying to bring the best talent and the best teams to come to Missouri to play in Norm Stewart Classic, man. Listen, I'm we'll, a, I'm a, we'll I'm talk, a vouch. We'll talk about it off the air, man. Yes, I'm a vouch. I'm definitely going to vouch for Thomas Jefferson. I'm definitely yeah. going to vouch for South Shore. You know and what I mean? This, this, right uh, now. Norm Stewart Classic is 48 hours of basketball. No one's doing it. And, and they travel, especially Tom yeah, Jefferson. Yeah, so that, that's going to be great, man. So when we get off air, dude, and you know, you and I talk from time to time, man. I'll get all the information, man, and we'll try to get a, a connect, man, to bring them out here, man. And, and basically, I tell people all the time, when you play in Coach Stewart's tournament, it's like getting a free unofficial visit to the University of Missouri, man, because you're playing actually at the arena. So we're trying to get the best high school teams with the best high school players to come out here. Uh, I want to say December, uh, that 20, 20th, 19th, 15th area. I don't have the numbers right, but it's every year. I, I know I know Jefferson, they, they're going to be in Arizona this year. but they got Yeah, I know. A lot of people have been committed. That's why I was trying to get my foot in there and, you know. But we'll you know, see. We, we'll, we'll see. Yeah. We'll see. I'll just figure them out Burke, because – some kind of connection to make it happen. So they got Connor, they got they got Connor Spratley. They got a three set guards who are all gonna be sophomores this year, and they all dogs. 
Like I'll, Connor I'll played with there, man. Right, we, so, we need to right. get him here to come play in the Norm Stewart Classic, bro. It's for sure, for sure. Yeah. All right, last question. Top five players in New York City history. Uh, I start one, Joe Hammond. Two, Nate Archibald. Three, Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Uh, four, Chris Mullen. Five, Boo Harvey. Easy. That's dope. That's dope. Well, listen, man. Look, I just want to say this, bro. Um, coming up early in New York City, you know, I, I went to Lincoln to play football and got on a basketball trail kind of late, my ninth grade year. Yes. Thank God I was able to make the team and hear stories about yourself and all these other guys that was playing the Pearls, the Ed Davidas. Uh, and and the, the countless others, Ross Strickland's, Boo Harvey's, all of these guys who kind of set the, the trail of what we wanted to follow. And the late, great Bobby Jones, Daddy Boogie was. Oh, yeah, wild, yeah, bro. for sure. Because it's so many guys we can name, but I it, it was just such an honor um, to actually play with you guys, um, get the knowledge that you gave me going into college. And and now that we reconnected and we talk all the time, man, I just want to say I appreciate you, brother. I love you, man. And just keep making New York City proud, man, because you definitely one of the legends, man. We miss you, brother. Bro, the love is reciprocated tenfold, man. Thank me for having me on your, your platform, man. I love you, bro. Just keep your foot on the gas, bro, man. If you do that and, and bring the true essence, man, everything will work out, bro. Thank you, man. I appreciate you, brother. Salute. Oh, always salute, brother. I bet. All right. Wow. It's incredible, man. Like, I, I don't think y'all know uh, how I'm feeling right now um, because it, it, it means a lot to, to reconnect with our New York City greats, legends. And my God, Derek Chief is definitely a legend. And just to think. He got the name Band-Aid in junior high school. That's tough. Whatever lessons you get out of life, just make sure to never get a, you know, give up on yourself. Give yourself a chance. And when you get in those tough situations, don't let them break you. No matter what you do, don't let them break you. Figure out the lessons you need to learn in life. Keep pursuing it because you never know what life has to offer. He did at the highest levels. Holy Cross, Missouri, the NBA, CBA, overseas. And he did it in real life, helping others who needed him. So to my basketball heads out there, I'd like to say thank you for joining me. I am your host, Glenn Poole Harding. And you've been watching Basketball Heads Live on New York City Basketball Network. Salute to everyone out there. Oh, yeah. So I'll let you know. We got that merch. All right. We got that merch, man. That's what we do. Because we are the official home for New York City basketball. That's what we do, baby. Peace.